Welcome to the R video tutorial, random number generation part four, four loops. This time we're going to learn how to do four loops. Uh, we'll cover it several other times throughout the course so you can get good at it because it's an essential skill. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University, but anybody can use it. All right, so we're going to use our code that we had from our last video. So if you haven't watched the last video, you probably should go, uh, go back and look at it. Uh, what we were trying to do is model a simple little bus simulation where the bus takes time between each stop and it has to stay at a specific amount of time because it takes time to load the riders. So you can go back and look at that one. And what we did is we played with it and we noticed that over every time we ran it we got a different value. So what we'd like to see is what is the distribution of those values and what can I say about them? And the idea is, is we need to repeat this over and over and over and over and over again. So here we want to repeat it a thousand times, record the answers, and then maybe look at a histogram of it or look at the mean of it, the median, all kinds of things that we can get out of this so that we can help understand how this little simulation behaves and how a bus route might work if these assumptions were met. All right, so to do a for loop is pretty easy in R, but before you do a for loop, you need to create a container. And what I call a container is I'm going to be looping through things, and as I'm going along, I want to record the answer. So I need a place to put the answer, and that's what I call a container. So in this case, we're only recording one answer, which is the time. So I'm going to name this uh, time one, and I'm going to repeat zero, uh, 1,000 times. And the reason I'm repeating zero is it created a vector for me that's filled with zeros. As I go through my loop, I can fill in each uh, zero or replace each zero with an actual number. Okay, once I've got that set up, then I just set up a for loop. So here we go, for loop. And uh, the syntax in R is for, you're going to put parentheses, then you're going to pick a, an index variable. So I'm just going to call it I because that's the most common for programmers. And in most computing classes, they start with something simple as this because I stands for the index. And then we can put in, and then we're going to say, well, how far do we want to go? Well, we want to go from 1 to 1,000. Why 1,000? Well, that's how many times we wish to repeat this over and over and over again, and that's how many piece, places we have in our container. So I put in here a curly brace to open it up, then at the bottom of my loop, I will put a curly brace to close it off. So anything that happens between the curly braces gets repeated over and over and over and over again. Now, what I was interested in is the total time involved, which is this line here. Now, I want to record this number, so I'm gonna say time one, and remember, this is a vector now, so it has an index. I'm going to say the ith position is going to get this value so that we have it over and over and over again. So let's give this a go and see what happens. Remember, if you watched the last video, we ran this little simulation again and again and again. Some of the values were between, I think, 32 and like 44 or something like that. Uh, but let's see what happens if we were to run this thing uh, a thousand times. So we're going to run this. It'll take a little bit of time to run it a thousand times. Oh, oh look, it's done. Uh, computers are very fast at this, and it finished our problem very quickly. Uh, if we wanted to, we can come over here and look at time one. It's a list of a thousand numbers. Uh, or what I would rather do is look at a histogram of this thing. Um, we'll change the X label to uh, time, and this is in minutes. And let's see, the main would be uh, bus route times. And let's give this a go and see what it looks like. Um, well, let's see here. What does this look like? Notice it's kind of right skewed some, which we would expect because it's still reflecting times. And sometimes things can just take a long time. Uh, but on average, it seems to be around 40 minutes. Uh, and we have this information. It seems to be around 40 minutes uh, that it takes to, to do this route. It looks like it could take all the way up to an hour. And if they're really lucky, it could take uh, under just under half an hour. So what we can do is we can get information from this. So we could do the mean 
of time one and see what it is. And uh, we can do other things like the quantiles. Uh, that's always a popular one because it gives you the min, the max, and all of those fun quantiles. So zero, 0 0.25. 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and 1. So let's see what these come out to be so we have some idea. But the reason I'm going through this is I want you to see how useful uh, it is to be able to repeat something over and over again. And the simulation is a good example of that. So on average, the mean time is about 39 minutes and it was as low as 29 minutes and took as long as 54 minutes. And this gives us that information. Uh, we have here, here is the median at 39.5. And you can see most of the time, 50% of the time, we were between 37 and 42 minutes for the total trip on this for the driver. And uh, the great thing is, is you can crank this up if you wanted to. So we can uh, do 10,000 and change that to 10,000. So now our container is big enough to hold all the results. We loop through and do this 10,000 times and record each value. And we can do the exact same thing again and see what happens. Notice there was an actual slight delay to do 10,000 times on this. Computers are really fast. They're really good at doing this. So don't get too worried. Uh, notice this time as low as 27, as high as 54, but the average is still around 39. And uh, we can look here at the times again. And it is probably still a little bit right skewed, even though it looks quite symmetric on this particular one. Uh, but it does give us a feel for what happens in our simulation. And in simulations, you often just go through and repeat over and over and over again to get a sense of what are the possibilities that might happen due to randomness. Uh, and that's really what it's for. So uh, this is our first look at for loops. We're going to keep continuing using them and random number generation. So just stay tuned and watch the next video.